uh, 43, I had a question coming out of chapter three, number 116. And here was where we were taking a look at a box of cookies. And they told us that in this box of cookies that we had 10 cookies total. And you can see here, I have my three chocolate cookies and my seven butter cookies, right? So initially I had this ratio of three to seven. All right, and the first part of this question says, hey, draw a tree diagram that represents the possibilities for the cookie selections and write the probabilities along each branch. So usually folks are okay with this first branch, right? Now keep in mind, I'm gonna pick two cookies. And we usually say, okay, I get that this initially is three out of 10 for the probability of picking a chocolate cookie, because again, initially there are 10 cookies total. And then seven out of 10 on the butter side of things. Now I do wanna point out that if you took a look, oops, let me write total here. I erased the wrong thing. If you take a look at the probabilities here, and I'm just gonna highlight three tenths and seven tenths, you can see that these sum to one, and they should, because if you're gonna pick a cookie, you're either gonna pick a chocolate or a butter. Now this problem, I wanna point out that we're doing sampling without replacement, because cookies are delicious, so we're gonna eat them. All right, and I wanna show you how this plays out. So now let me go along, we're gonna assume this has happened, that I picked a chocolate cookie. So if I pick a chocolate cookie, right? If this is gone because I picked it, now I want you to take a look that there are nine cookies left, right? Nine cookies left. Now, when I go to pick my second cookie, I could still either pick a chocolate or a butter, all right? But if you look, now I only have two chocolate cookies out of nine, and I have seven butter cookies out of nine. And again, if we take a look at those respective probabilities on that, that little pairing of branches right here, they also sum to one, and they should. All right, now I'm gonna erase some of this because I have a whole bunch of, of notation here. So let me erase this. All right, and let's say we had gone the other way. So let me go ahead and erase. I'm gonna erase a little bit more carefully so I don't erase everything. So let me get those. All right. So now let's say when we were running this, we actually went along this branch, right? So I'm here, let's say I actually picked a butter cookie. Well, if I pick a butter cookie, there are still nine cookies left, right? But the breakdown is different. Now you see there are three chocolate and six butter, and that's where the three ninths and six ninths are coming from. And again, with this complete set of branches, you see complementary events. And when I say complementary events, I mean they're, the sum of their probabilities total out to one. So that's how I start to build my tree diagram. And when you're doing tree diagrams without replacement, those probabilities on the second set of branches turn into different numbers. And what I mean by that is, right, initially I had three out of 10, and now for a chocolate, it's two out of nine, or another butter, seven out of nine. Okay, so I've set up my tree diagram. Let me go ahead and just erase all these notes that I have. And then let's start playing out the problems that were given to us in this, in this number 116. So we, we did part A and it says for part B are the probabilities for the flavor of the second cookie that Miguel selects independent of his first selection. Now you can play the independent formulas out. So you could literally, you could say, well, is the probability of getting a chocolate and then another chocolate the same as the probability of getting a chocolate and then a butter? You, you could calculate those numbers, but what I wanna point out here, and I, I feel the easier way to see this on a tree diagram, is if initially the ratio between butter and chocolate is three and seven, right? Three tenths and then seven tenths. If, if these events were really independent, then these numbers on the second branch would be the same. So if they were independent, you would have seen a three tenths here and a seven tenths here, but, but you didn't, right? And because those changed, you know they're not independent, right? And it definitely depends. Um, your cookie selection on the second try depends on what you picked the first time out because we're sampling without replacement. All right, for, for part C, it says, for each complete path through the tree, write the event it represents and find the probabilities. So this is another two by two, right? So I could get a chocolate and then a chocolate, a chocolate and then a butter, a butter and a chocolate, and a butter and a butter. Those are my probabilities. And we've talked about how when you have ands, and you're looking at a tree diagram, so let me write this here, when you have an and on a tree diagram, you're gonna multiply the appropriate branches. And really, if I, if I wanna be specific, you're gonna multiply the probabilities on the appropriate branches. So let me write multiply probabilities, probabilities on 
on appropriate branches. So let's go crunch all of these and see what we're coming up with. Okay, so here we start to go like chocolate and chocolate. Okay, so that's the first one, C and C. All right, so I'm gonna multiply three tenths and two ninths, and then I get that there's about a 7% chance that I'll pull two chocolates. All right, now let me clear that out, and we're gonna do the other branches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do chocolate and butter. All right, and then I'm gonna multiply three tenths and seven ninths because I'm over here on that set of probabilities. Right, And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do butter and chocolate, and then butter and butter. And as a little side note, if you were to add these four numbers up on your calculator, they have to sum to one because they do represent the sample space, right? If you're picking two cookies, those quite literally are the four options that you have coming out of that, that two cookie grab. All right, so now let's go move to part D, and I've got the, the tree diagram written again, but this for part D is saying let S be the event that they were the same flavor. So S is equal to same flavor, and they want the probability of S. Well, what goes, what events, what outcomes go in same flavor? Keep in mind that you have four, right? We have C and then C, we have CB, we have BC, and then BB, right? So chocolate, 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 butter, butter, chocolate, butter, butter. And if I want the same flavor, I want chocolate, chocolate, and butter, butter. Those are the branches I want. So I want this branch here and this branch here. And we're going to now use the addition rule, right? I'm going to add those two disjoint branches. And because they're disjoint, there's nothing to subtract out when I use the, the or rule or the addition formula, right? So the probability of A or B is the good old addition rule, probability of A plus probability of B minus any overlap. And for this particular problem, A is, this is right in itself, it's chocolate and chocolate. This one is butter, butter. And there is no overlap because if you're picking two cookies, you can't be on this branch and this branch at the same time. So all I need to do is add their probabilities. So I, I added those together and there's about a 53% chance that I'll get the same flavor. All right, and in part E, it asks you, what's the probability that you'll get different flavors? Well, the quickest way is just to take the complement to this one, right? Because if this is the probability that they get the same flavor, then the complement will be that they're not the same or they're different. But I also went ahead and I did it, again, multiplying the appropriate branches and adding those, those disjoint branches. Because again, if we want different flavors, let me write here, T is for different flavors. And my four possibilities in my outcome are chocolate, 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 butter, butter, chocolate, and then butter, butter, I want these two, right? So I want this branch and this branch, or I should say this pair of branches and this pair of branches. So that's what I did. Use the addition rule, added up those, those respective branches, right? And I don't have any overlap to subtract out, and I get 0.466. And again, I, I still think it's easier. If I've done part D, I can just use the complement rule and get there. All right, so in F, it said, hey, what's the probability that the second cookie is butter. So we're going to go ahead and say U is um, second cookie. Ah, that's not how you spell second. Wait for it. Second cookie is butter. So if I want the second cookie to be butter, keep in mind we go chocolate, 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 butter, butter, chocolate, butter, butter, right? Those are our four possibilities. And if I want the second cookie to be butter, I want this branch and this branch. So that's why you see me circling the branches where butter is in the second position. And then we go through that same, same process again. I add the disjoint probabilities, and because they're disjoint, I have nothing to subtract out. Ooh, and I'm seeing a little typo here. I think there's probably supposed to be a decimal point right there. I will fix that and, and upload can or get that fixed on Canvas. All right, thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye.